<laughs> Apologize for that. A slow start here this morning. Uh, hopefully your day has started off to or had a good start here. Uh, our weather forecast is a couple themes here, and some of it follows on on uh, Jill's comments here about the, uh, the recent humid weather. But as uh, as you'll see, we do have some changes coming up uh, next week from the the recent pattern. I want to start though looking at the last week, and if you uh, you think about this, we had we had a a, a relatively warm start to the week or the, the last week, and then of course it's turned cooler. And, and, damp, and wetter here uh, over the last several days. But if we look at the means for the entire week, they range from a little a couple degrees cooler than normal in the far northern part of the state to a degree or two warmer than normal across the south. And so it, as usual, things average out a little bit. We end up somewhere in the middle. But this pattern with uh, the relatively cooler conditions in the north, relatively warmer in the south, that's something we've seen repeated for a lot of the growing season uh, thus far. And again, this week, or this past week was no exception. The right-hand side here are uh, precipitation totals. Note that these only go through yesterday morning, but uh, highly variable totals ranging from very little or no precipitation in the far north. You can see that in parts of upper Michigan uh, to many areas with a half to one inch across the lower peninsula. And then the, uh, the, the big winners, at least in terms of water this last week, were across the southeast. And that was that's primarily due to uh, precipitation we saw over the last couple of days. Now, it's also worth noting yesterday we had another weather system go through late during the day and then overnight. Uh, that one, at least from a meteorological standpoint, definitely overperformed uh, in terms of what we had thought earlier. Uh, many areas picked up. It was a solid quarter to half inch in, in uh, many spots, but uh, across the south, we did see uh, quite a few spots that picked up a half to three quarters. And it was uh, the other thing to note about the rainfall last night was, in, and this is in contrast to some of the pattern you see here where it was pretty scattered. There's some areas you can see uh, little areas here following individual cells. Last night, the, white, the rainfall was widespread. It was, uh, it, so lots of areas had very, very similar. It was homogenous over a large area. Uh, and again, just in most spots, it was, a, it was a steady light to moderate rain over several hours. And, and again, that's, those are the ones that soak in. Those are also the ones that give us uh, uh, extended wetness duration events, leaf wetting events, and so forth. So if you look at this, you can add, easily add or, uh, a half an inch to these totals, and that, that'll bring you pretty much up to date. Uh, one, one last thing here, too, to, again, because of the variable precipitation rates that we've seen here over the last couple of weeks, uh, you're looking at it, the upper right-hand side here, this is the so-called vegetation drought index, and it's a, it's a remotely sensed product that looks at the really the surface temperature, which is a reflection of how much water is available to the vegetation at that point in time, given the, uh, climatology and so forth. And it, an interesting pattern here, this reflects, I think, strongly right now, it reflects soil moisture up in the top layers of the profile. So even though our statistics say over most of the state right now, our, our full profile, if we look four, five, six feet of soil, the soil moisture there is, it's fairly close to where it should be for this time of the year, which is, which is relatively high. But this particular product shows a reflection more of the topsoil moisture, especially for our annual crops that don't have roots down that far yet. And what it's suggesting with these brown colors here, especially across uh, northern portions of, of lower Michigan uh, into the thumb and then portions of upper Michigan, especially the uh, Keweenaw, western UP and uh, the northeastern or the eastern corner of, of upper Michigan. We actually do have uh, probably water demand beyond what that, again, the, the topsoil is able to supply. So the very, very beginning uh, stages of, of, again, a little bit of a, of a lack of, of water. Now contrast that, uh, and it's a little harder to see this color, but <clears throat> across much of southern lower Michigan, you see some greens uh, here and uh, even some blues indicating that this is this is a direct reflection of this, especially this rate, recent rainfall here where conditions are, are actually still very, very wet. And I, I uh, had driven across the southern part of the state or southeastern lower Michigan yesterday. And again, given some heavy precipitation that fell the night before last, still actually in some areas were still quite a bit of standing water more than I, I thought. But it, again, it varies across the state. The southeast, though, definitely right now is the wettest part of the state in terms of, of moisture. Our degree days uh, totals here seasonally versus normal. 
the colors here, reds indicate that we have surpluses of degree days. This one goes back to the beginning of March. It's a, it's looking at uh, our overwintering or overwintering um, accumulations uh, or for overwintering crops. Blues indicate uh, deficits. And again, not a surprise given what we talked about earlier with the temperature pattern. Most of the state has a surplus of degree days, uh, especially across uh, the lower peninsula. But we do have areas of upper Michigan and then the spreading westward and you can see into Wisconsin and into the Northern Plains. There, there are deficits still in terms of, of heat accumulation. So again, it depends on where you are relative to how much heat we've had so far for the season uh, relative to normal. Well, looking at the forecast here quickly, uh, I mentioned some changes occurring and we're gonna do a little bit of a really basic Meteorology here, and again, we talk about the jet stream so often because it's so important in looking at our day-to-day and week-to-week weather patterns. And I've, I've got two maps on here. One of them is the jet stream flow pattern here expected over the next few days. And you can see the time time frame down here. And the, as much has been much uh, the case, most of the growing season thus far, we've had relatively large ridges and troughs in the flow around the hemisphere. So a deep trough here over Hudson Bay, you can see northwesterly flow down from Canada into the Great Lakes region. That's what we have right now. And this is directly the reason why we're seeing this relatively cool. And you got to call it unsettled because not only is we, are we bringing some cooler air in from uh, higher latitudes in Canada, we've also got a weather system coming through on a relatively regular basis, almost every one to two days. And that's, again, that's a result of this jet stream pattern. But note here off to our west, you've got another ridging feature out over Western US, these orange and brown colors here. And basically right now, the development of a big heat wave for uh, at least portions of the Southwest, that's gonna be spreading eastward into portions of the Southern US. Probably will never make it here, but it is gonna ultimately, the, the flow pattern will change. And by the time we get to next week, Look at it's and it's subtle. It's it's but there's some very very important changes that take place here over the next several days. The big one is is that this big ridge out that's now out over the western U.S. Uh, shifts to the east over the central and even into the the Corn Belt here. The trough that was over Hudson Bay that that's brought the cool unsettled weather that flattens out a little bit and then moves off into uh, well into the Atlantic ultimately, but that's a big change for us. And that is the major, major feature, I think, looking at our forecast with relatively high confidence suggested, we will be seeing significant changes here by the end of the weekend and definitely by next week. So that's that's the theme of, uh, of the forecast. Our map here this morning, the uh, looking at, at conditions here uh, at, as of eight o'clock in this morning, that low pressure system that brought the widespread rainfall to much of lower Michigan yesterday has moved quickly. It's all, all the way out into the mid-Atlantic. That's on its way eastward. Uh, from the radar, you can see a few lingering showers or sprinkles left here in far eastern parts of the state. That will be ending over the next uh, hour or two. And as Jill mentioned here on the satellite, you can see uh, many areas given the recent rainfall overnight, plus uh, relatively high humidities, we've still got areas of fog. Uh, that will burn off relatively quickly. And for most areas, we will see a decrease in cloudiness here uh, today. Mostly sunny skies. It should be really actually fairly nice conditions over most areas. But uh, on the weather map, you can see this dash line here. That's a that's the, the way the meteorologists draw in here, a little trough of a elongated area, elongated area of low pressure. It's not a strong thing, but it's going to be enough later on this afternoon to probably set off a few ice, and we'll call it isolated showers or maybe a thunder shower. And I'm going to say primarily for the eastern part of the state. That would be diurnally driven. Again, if it happens, it will be late in the day. And this is definitely the exception rather than the rule. Most areas will remain dry. Uh, and as I say, probably decreasing cloudiness and, and actually fairly nice day today. Once again, cool temperatures though, uh, high temperatures mainly from the 60s, upper 60s north into the low, uh, maybe a couple mid 70s in the south. So we'll be a couple degrees below normal. That will also be the case tomorrow uh, as we look uh, to the forecast map here. And what had looked earlier, the next weather system in this series that's going across the upper Midwest, 
Uh, it looks like now most of the moisture with this will be confined in areas to our south and west. It had looked earlier like at least southern lower Michigan would be picking up more significant precipitation with this. And with time, it's basically, again, the, the forecast guidance is suggesting most of that will, will remain south of us. But there is a chance, I, I, I think, that we will see at least the threat of some, again, some isolated showers uh, during especially the afternoon and early evening tomorrow. Uh, but that, once again, the exception. And one of the themes you're going to hear here in this outlook, we talk a lot about rainfall. And again, for disease management, which Jill talked about, very, very important, the timing and frequency of precept, there will be many chances for precipitation here over the next several days into, well, certainly through the weekend. But the, the key factor to remember is even though that while, while there are chances, they're relatively small chances, so maybe a 20 or 30% at best. The other issue is, is that when we do get rain, it will be light, uh, fairly, uh, so hundreds of an inch, maybe a 10th or two tops. But many areas, if they do see rain, it will be light. Uh, and then by Saturday morning here at eight o'clock, you can see the, again, the next weather system tomorrow that's moved off to the East Coast. And guess what? There's another one waiting in the wings. Just like I said, that very, very, almost a sequential series of these weather systems moving from West to East. That will be here by uh, late Friday and overnight Friday into Saturday. And that's uh, that'll be another chance for some precipitation, but once again, we'll call it isolated to scattered. That word scattered, by the way, or isolated, typically you're talking about maybe only 20% or less of the area that actually sees precipitation. Scattered, when we hear that word, typically think less than half of the area that's impacted or influenced by precipitation. Uh, so those words do have meaning in terms of, uh, in, in the forecast, in terms of how many, how large an area is expected to be affected by the precip. These are definitely, on the less than half. These are, again, most areas will remain dry. Now, the next chance for precipitation after this Friday and Saturday, there is another weather system that comes through uh, late Saturday into Sunday. That one looks a like it will be the, probably the, the greatest odds statewide for precip, but still maybe only 50-50, maybe a little bit better than that. But we likely will see some rainfall late Saturday into Sunday over most of the state, beginning in the Northwest, uh, on late Saturday and then continuing on Sunday into the southern part of the state. Uh, that's, I think, for most areas, that is the next best chance for precip. Beyond that, we will see that jet stream change I talked about. We'll notice warmer temperatures probably by Sunday, but definitely by Monday and Tuesday of next week. High temperatures will increase back into the uh, certainly above the 80 degree mark. We could push 90 degrees uh, actually for a high temperature, maybe by the middle of next week. Low temperatures from the 40s and 50s where they are now, rising into the 50s and then into the 60s next week. So uh, uh, definitely a little spell of some summer weather is expected next week. There will be a continuing chance for showers, but like I said, it will not be a high, 20, 30% chance. Uh, and so after Saturday, Sunday, the next chance for, I think, a large or more significant rainfall probably coming towards the middle part, middle to latter part of next week, maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, precip totals lighter than normal for the upcoming week, as I mentioned. Many chances, but still not much in the gauge here. Most areas less than half an inch. Most areas actually less than a quarter of an inch expected here. With the warmer temperatures expected next week, our water demands will be on the increase, especially as we move to next week. These are potential evapotranspiration forecast totals through next week. And you can see many areas were pushing two tenths of an inch per day. And it'll be even higher than that next week as those temperatures go back into the 80s. So maybe two tenths to a quarter of an inch. So water needs will be certainly increasing and, and above normal for this time of the year uh, as we move into next week. Finally, in the medium range, where are we going beyond that? Well, if you can see the jet stream pattern here, it looks a lot like that second image I had on the, the jet stream map, a big ridge over the middle of North America. And there's a lot of confidence about that here for the third week of the month, looking at above normal or warmer than normal mean temperatures over much of the central US here for that, that time frame. Also note down below, uh, and it's not as strong a signal as it is for temperature, but also normal to below normal precipitation totals. So warmer and drier is the direction we'll be heading certainly by next week and maybe a little bit beyond that. The question about how long does that pattern last? Well, we've seen a lot of changes about every 
four, five to six or seven days. And I think it's no, that, that's probably my expectation for beyond that. So does the warm and dry pattern last very long? Well, it probably changes by the end of the month. And that's, that's the guess right now. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on that for next week. And with that summarizing, as I mentioned, uh, you heard the word rain and showers mentioned a lot, but in our outlook, we're, we're looking at two, two big things, two trends. One is that many chances for precip, but very small and below normal precipitation totals, even so. The other big one is that a, a definite warming trend is, uh, is in store here as we move into the late weekend and certainly into next week. And with that, I'll wrap up and introduce uh, our speaker for next week's virtual breakfast next Thursday morning. We'll have uh, Dr. A. Sangani with us from uh, MSU's Biosystems and Ag Engineering Department. And A. is gonna be talking about uh, drainage and how to get the best out of your drainage system. And with that, I will turn it back over to Phil. Thanks.